I wanted to start with the move to Bellator and how big a deal it is for you personally. So the move to Bellator was uh, I was I was sparring in the gym one day. Um, we had really no uh, – I mean, we kind of had a, a game plan of what we were going to end up trying to do. But um, I was I was sparring in the gym one day. The Bellator guys came in, um, and then they saw me spar. My coach, Bob Cook, told them a little bit about me and, and, and what I've done and with my wrestling career. And um, after practice, I was sitting there, and, and my coach came up to me and was like, hey, what do you think about signing with Bellator? And I was like, I mean, yeah, man, that'd be awesome. Um, what were they saying? Were, were they interested? And he said, yes, they were. Then he told me kind of like what would end up happening with like money situation and things like that. And about a month later, we, we all came to uh, terms and boom, now I'm signed. So Right on. I mean, uh, after four fights, it feels a little quick. It Does it feel quick to you? Um, it, it, I kind of, it, it kind of does, but. I've, I've always been able to pick things up pretty quickly. Um, so, I mean, my whole life, I've, I've kind of just gotten where I wanted to be a lot faster than I think a lot of people are able to do. So, um, yeah, I mean, it, it's very quick. It's, uh, I was, I've been doing this for about two years now, two and a half years. And, uh, but I, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty prepared, man. I've had over, you know, I don't know how many wrestling matches I've had my whole life, but I've wrestled in some pretty big events. Um, and, and sometimes that can win you fights alone. So um, I'm, I'm pretty prepared. Um, I'm, I'm ready to go, and I've had a good training camp. So, As I understand it, this is the th- – Antonio Jones, I think that's – do I have that right, Antonio Jones? Yes. Okay. Th- thank you. Because you've been through like three opponents. That's what I was getting through. Like, how do you mentally prepare for three different guys you're supposed to face in the last three months? And and they settled on a guy who, as I understand it, is dropping down from middleweight to fight you at welterweight. Wel- welterweight, excuse me. So since I've been fighting, I've kind of dealt with with those things, with uh, with with the guys pulling out and different guys here and there. Um, it's just it's it's kind of been something that I've I've already experienced like, like three or four times now. So this time wasn't any different for me. Um, the guy I'm fighting is, is is dropping down like you said, and and you know he's never he's never made 170. I'm, I'm sure um, from what I've seen. So this will be a tough cut for him. But uh, you know he, he's he's had some pretty good fights. He's had I mean he has he has a winning record. He's he's done well for himself. So. Um, I, I'm just I'm just looking forward to getting in there and mixing it up with him. So, yeah, man. I mean, uh, he's, I saw that the fight he had on Dana White's Tuesday Night Contender Series because I was just up at that time watching it. And yeah, I, I think it's going to be a good challenge for you. The last fight that you had, I watched at XFN 356. It was uh, Josh Weston who's got some kickboxing and, and some jujitsu, but it was the first time that you've been made to go the distance. What'd you learn about yourself then? I learned that I needed to, I needed to learn a lot more. Um, I, I wasn't uh, I took four fights and I, I think like six five to six months. It was very quick. I just uh, I just wanted experience, wanted to do it, and allow myself to to take any time to to correct anything. And uh, with with this camp and and how long it's been since I fought now. I, I've experienced a lot more. I've done a lot more things <clears throat> as far as get prepared. So um, this will definitely be the best version of me by far um, because of, you know, the sparring and things like that and being associated with guys that are the top guys in the world and, and, and sparring those guys every day. So that's only up from here. You know, I'm working hard. I'm starting to understand this a little bit more as we go. And, uh, yeah, man, that, that last fight, I needed that. I needed to know I could go three fives, and, and that's exactly what happened. So Right on. So just backing up a little bit and, and telling your story a bit, first I want to ask you, what was it, what's it like to be, I mean, raised up by Daniel Cormier, who rings out in the sport, but even the casual fans, it means something, specifically to folks that have followed Oklahoma State Wrestling, myself included. What does that mean to you, and how did you guys even meet, man? So, um, yeah, man, DC has done so much for me as far as, uh, like this whole MMA thing, but not only that, man, he's, he's, he's helped me, uh, 
transition from Oklahoma to California and uh, he's helped me, you know, get paid and, and do things like that to be able to live in the Bay area. So uh, I, I consider him a big brother, man. And he's taken me to all these big fights and let me see these things that, you know, I'm going to have to be prepared for and things like that. So, you know, I just have a luxury that, that a lot of people don't get to have. And, um, and, and a lot of that comes from honestly, man, you know, just wrestling for the same uh, call. It's such a tradition. Um, anybody who wrestles there, you know, you just kind of understand him a little bit more than other people. So, yeah, he's uh, he's done a great job, man. He he's, he's does a great job with me. He helps me out with everything. And, uh, you know, it, it all stems back to, to Oklahoma State and, and that brotherhood that that team provides. So, Well, in talking about Oklahoma State, one of the things that I followed is uh, your recruiting because uh, I'm a Tulsa kid, you're a Tulsa kid, uh, state championships at Union for people that don't know it, but I'm sure they do. What was it like for John Smith to recruit you, to tell you what you were going to do, as opposed to you'd be like, eh, I don't know? Because the way that I understand it is he more or less told you and, and your and your brother that you guys are going to come over here or we're going to beat your ass. <laughs> is that how it was? Yeah. Okay, please tell me. So, <clears throat> yeah, I've been a, I was a Sooner fan my whole life. I, my grandpa was a two-time All-American in football at a OU back in – the early seventies. So we were just, I mean, we were sooner born, sooner bred. And, uh, through, through high school, I, I really thought I was going to end up wrestling there. Um, so <clears throat> after uh, duels, the junior duels, um, I got a call from, uh, Zach Zito about recruiting and, and things like that and coming to Oklahoma state. And then, um, next thing I know, he said he was going to come meet us up for dinner and I think the next night, I, I they get a knock on the door, and uh, John Smith and and him are there. And uh, yeah, man, it was just a, uh, it was it was surreal. I, that was the first time I ever truly felt kind of starstruck. Cause I mean, I've seen him before, but he's never like one on one talked to me. So when that happened, uh, it was a pretty easy commitment, especially when we were sitting at the kitchen room. I mean, the living room table, about to eat. He said. Uh, you know, if you don't want to commit here, then we'll just find someone that'll beat your ass. So I was like, oh, shit. So <laughs> we ended up committing pretty quickly after that. Right on, man. Uh, and you're very close to your brother. Uh, what would you learn about perseverance from that cat? Because, I mean, there's not a rot written on him because obviously it's you that's front and center. But it, from my understanding, it feels like you two have a, a – I mean, it's a really, really tight bond. Yeah, my brother's my homie, man. He's uh he's my best friend. So, yeah, he's just man. He's been through a lot. He's he's he's, you know, overcome a lot. You know, a lot of people don't know too much about his story, but uh, when we were growing up, they said uh had a big a big time surgery and they said he would never walk again. And uh, I think about a year and a half later, he started able to do a lot more. And then, yeah, he was state champ in high school he was top 20 in the country as recruit got recruited by oklahoma state numerous schools uh and yeah we just we committed together and and we just always each other side i mean he's even he even moved out to san jose with me just to kind of you know hang out and i mean he has a, a great job but he can kind of do a little bit more than a lot of people are able to do so yeah i mean, we were real close we've always been real close and uh I don't see that ever changing, so. Right on. Well, and a bit about just your experience transitioning from wrestling in college to figuring out you wanted to do this, and, and not just do this, but do this for your living. What was that transition like? Because that I honestly find fascinating, that part where we're, we're finishing in college and we have to figure out what we're going to do, and then we choose to do something like mixed martial arts. Man, I, I tell people all the time, I've, I've beat the shit out of people my whole life and, and, and street fights and, and things like that. So when I got done wrestling, I, uh, I, I still had like a really, really strong competitive edge to me. And I just didn't feel like, I feel like I was just be turning my wheels in wrestling. You know, there, there wasn't truly a lot of money in it for me. Uh, I saw myself living a different lifestyle, 
And uh, I got a couple of phone calls from some uh, gyms that you know, kind of were recruiting me in, I guess, in a small, in a, in a different way than uh, wrestling. But, yeah, they they brought me out there. And then uh, I started, you know, fighting these dudes. And, and I really liked it. I, I, I had that competitive thing to me. And, and next thing I know, I moved to San Jose, California and, and made it a full-time deal. Right on. Uh, was there any... Was there any pushback from like your folks or, or your family or I mean because I I also understand that you're you're expecting congratulations, I mean thank you so much I appreciate that no like seriously though like that in and of itself you're you're gonna be a daddy dude like and yeah I know and not for nothing but your living is life or death so like how do you how do you deal with those emotions man it's to me it's uh. I, 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 my family worked real hard, man. When I was growing up, we didn't have a lot. We didn't have a lot of money. We, uh, we struggled, you know, many years. And, and to me, it's, it's once you kind of know that that's a thing and, and you know that, that you, that you have an ability to, that a lot of people don't have. And, and you have something that, you know, some people just can't find. I just, I just made it a thing to where I, no matter what in my life, I'm just going to, try to change everything you know because i mean there are opportunities to make a lot of money in this and you know and man i'm I've, my whole life I, I i've always not i just don't want to be i guess forgotten i guess you'd say you know i, I want to die if, if anything happens and i die i want to be remembered as someone who went and you know risked it i don't want to be someone that kind of just hangs out and, and you know just works a, a steady job and does all, all those things and you know whatever so which is there's nothing wrong with that i just i just have something in me that i don't think a lot of people have and i just wanted to pursue this and like i said man i i've i'm a fighter i fought my whole life I've, I've lived in areas where you had to fight and uh you know my first fist fight i think i was like third grade fourth grade so i mean it's just something that just comes to me i mean would, how many fights would you say that you've had just period in my life in your life like, oh man Oh, probably, I don't know, 200 street fights, I maybe more. That. I can see that. I can see that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I only got caught like twice. But. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. So like, and knowing that about yourself, right. And knowing that you're just much more likely to get into a fight or at the very light, uh, very least finish a fight and that you want to live an extraordinary life. I yeah. got, I got to say like, I'm a few years older than you. Like I'm, I'm 32. I believe you're 26. Is that right? Yes, sir. 26. Okay. okay. That, to hell with the sir stuff. Six years. Let's stop. Um, but I'm watching you wrestle in college, and you broke your foot. I want to say it was against Mark Reed. Uh, yes. In a bedlam duel, right? Okay. How did you come back from that? Because I know so much of the training is being on your feet and going all the time. And I mean, if you're if you're looking for a fight you're probably fighting yourself like were you ever self-destructive uh did you no did, man okay. i uh i just yeah so when i broke my foot i had a lens franc uh injury which is a, a pretty severe foot injury it's it's you break a couple bones you tear some ligaments and things like that in your foot and and the required rehab is a six-month deal but I did everything I could to wrestle. I, and if you ever, if you, if, if coach Smith or anybody that was there when I was training, I trained on my knees and hand fought and, and did cardio things for almost two months. Well, not two months, but a month trying to figure out a way to wrestle. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a, uh, I was in a boot and one of our, my teammates uh, had a, big family thing that happened to him and, and it was pretty devastating and um i remember he was at my weight class so when i broke my foot he, he became the starter in the lobby and it just happened they're wrestling penn state in a uh, national championship duel like walk in there and i i 18 19 pounds over the weight and i told coach smith i said hey man i'll lose this weight give me three days and i'll go wrestle with these guys but that's just kind of I, I i just i've always just been i don't know man i'm just i'm just real collective i i 
I understand that injuries happen with things. I understand that, you know, things always don't really go your way. And it's just something that, um, you know, I've learned through, through sports and, and have a father that has taught me a lot of things. And, um, yeah, man, I, I sat there for six months. Um, I was doing that way too much, but yeah, I just, I don't know, man. I just, that's just who I am. And, and I think people will realize that, um, sooner than later. So right on is Rosendo Sanchez still helping you with your hands. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. He's, uh, he's my guy, man. So, so like there are two things that you hear about guys that end up winning belts in this sport. One of them is everybody's got a tremendous wrestling foundation right? And we all know you have that. The other one is somebody's got thunder in their hands because you can't always take somebody to the ground. So how have your hands developed in two years? Man, I, I can't, I can't really, all I can do is show you, man. It's just, uh, you know, I, I, please, my don't. First four, Pl- please don't, please <laughs> don't. Yeah. My first four fights, um, I just wasn't experienced and, and people were wanting me to stand up a little bit more and, and things like that. But at the, in the back of my mind, man, I wrestled for 16 years at a very high level. So that's always going to be there. Um, but I have great, great coaches. Um, Daniel Cormier's coaches are this. Mine are the same. Mm-hmm. I, I I'm learning the right things. I trust them. Like my coaches, they, you know, it, they are always there. They're always pushing me. They're always wanting to be in the gym. So, man, I, I, I've been sparring for about 12 weeks now, and uh, all I can say is that they've gotten a lot better. Right on, right on. Um, I got to ask you, did you take uh, Nurmagomedov to the ground? Did you do that? Have I ever taken Habib down? Yeah. Yeah, I've taken him down a couple times for sure. Yeah. <laughs> How was it sparring with him, man? Sparring with him is intense. Okay. He, uh, he's definitely the best guy in the world. But uh, that's that's something that is another thing that I have, man. That I, I get to spar that guy, and and when you fight him live rounds, there's not really anybody else in in the world that I'm I'm afraid of, you know. So it's it's a it's a blessing, and then you know, it's just, it's a challenge, man. It's something that I, I look forward to when he comes into town, and uh, and we'll continue to we'll continue this little relationship as he shows up so man it's a lot of fun it's hard but uh, like I said there's just not going to be very many people out there that are like him um, able to spar him in, in live rounds and, and punch each other in the face it's, it's pretty fun so what did you think about the hype around him because we're all hearing the stories the dudes fighting bears and stuff like what did you think when you heard all of this stuff before you ever met him I just, I don't, man, I, I, I just know him as Habib, man. I, I don't really look at all that, I, that kind of shit. Um, I just know him as, as a guy who comes in our gym every day and we shake hands and we talk and we mess around and, and we grapple and we fight and we do these things. He's just kind of like another one of my friends, man. He just happens to be one of the baddest in the world. So um, it's just kind of a, I don't know. Like people think the same thing about Daniel Cormier, but. To me, I could call him right now, and, and we could talk for 30 minutes about whatever. It's just It's not really like a thing to me anymore, I guess. Right on. Right on. Well, you mentioned – well, you, you mentioned bad – I got to ask you, what do you think about that belt? About the belt? Yeah. The Which one? The B- belt? No, or? The, the BMF belt that was given to Masvidal last night after he beat – I think it's so cool. I think okay. that's a cool thing. I don't, I don't know – if I was the UFC, I don't think I would run it back. I think that's kind of a one-time deal. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't have anybody defend it because, truthfully, it's not the championship belt. But it is. it, it, it just happened to be those two dudes were able to do something that no one else has, uh, has even really thought about. And I don't know if there's any two other guys in the, in, in the UFC right now that could, could even make a claim for that. So um, I think it was cool. It was fun. It, it was – you know, a really smart marketing thing, and um, yeah, I think it was cool. So I think it should be done. No, I think that should be a one-time deal, unless maybe down the road or something. But right now, I don't think you're going to find two other guys that fit that personality more than them two. Right on. Um, to follow up on that, I got to ask you what you thought about the stoppage, because that's 
it's really hurting a lot of people's feelings. Yeah, for sure. This, I mean, MMA, man, it hurts people's feelings all the time. But you think people got to understand it's like, I mean, this dude's, I, I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm, I, I think it should have kept going, you know, but as a doctor, you see a, a dude who's cut wide open and he's kind of getting beat up a little bit. I could see why he would do it. I don't like I truly like agree with why why he'd stop the fight, but I could see why he did it. Cause I mean the cut was pretty gnarly, and 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 Masvidal was kind of whipping his ass just a little bit. So, I mean, <clears throat> I don't know. I don't think I would have stopped it, but I could see why they did. No man, I'm with you. Uh, I say to people that were like, "Yo, I've seen Nate get beat up like that." It's like that's not a good thing though. Like, yeah, no, he bleeds, but. Some of y'all need to get hit in the face a little bit more often to understand what's going on there. Because I'm, I'm with you, man. I just, I want to see the guy fight more. And yeah, I did, I did too. You know, because like if he, if he gets hurt, we're we're probably not going to see him fight more. And we already didn't see him for three years. So and I just, I like that he erred on the side of caution. I think we all know that Nate was in there to fight for that for that belt. So we all know what he's made of. But I'm with you. Um. I only had a couple more things to ask you about, dude. The first one was, is it surreal to you what's going on right now? Um, it, it's definitely, I mean, there's, it, it's it's just kind of starting to get a little bit more, a little hectic, not hectic, but a little bit more like, uh, I guess you would say a little bit more real. So, I mean, no, I think, It'll get a little bit different, especially if I can win a couple fights in this this organization and, and do well because the platform's so big. But like I said, man, I mean, I, wrestling at Oklahoma State was kind of like this in a way. I mean, it was right. it was like a big deal in, in a small little world. So uh, I don't know. It's it's definitely fun. Like yesterday, I was at, in Stillwater, and uh, you know, a lot of people, a lot more people recognize me for my MMA than they did for wrestling. So. It just kind of puts things in a perspective that um, I'm doing well enough now that people are, are, are seeing it. So, 100%. 100%. What would you say to someone who wanted to fight professionally? Um, if you have money, chill out. You don't need to do that. But if, <laughs> if you're trying to change your life, man, and, uh, you, and you actually like fighting, you not just think it's cool, like you like fighting people, then yeah, try it. Like for me, um, I just, it sounds whatever, but I just kind of always wanted to prove myself as the baddest around. So I, now I get to really kind of show people that I truly think I'm the best fighter in the world, you know, and it's not just, you know, local. I, I just want people to, I just want to be able to prove to myself that at the end of the day, what I've always been doing is, is, is what it is. So I don't know, man. I, I would tell, I tell my friends all the time when they ask me if that's what they can do, I tell them finish what they're doing. And, you know, it's not something you can do half ass. It's not something you can just, you know, if you're not fully wanting to do it, then I wouldn't do it. You know, if you're just kind of like, Oh, well maybe I'll try it. Or then I don't, I don't truly think you're a fighter. So. Right on. Kyle Crushman, man. Uh, Pride of my hometown, his hometown, Tulsa, Oklahoma, is on his way to Thackerville, I assume, uh, to get ready to fight, make his pro debut at Bellator at Windstar Casino. If you can get down there, get down there. Thank you so much, Kyle. Hey, thank you, man. I appreciate it.